are recording this session. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, some people are going to come later, but I need to start now just uh, be mindful about everybody's time. So uh, my name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of Latam Startups. And uh, right now I'm going to start talking about our community and programs. And for anyone that has questions about our programs, please uh, just let me know. Uh, I'll be uh, going through our website because it's the easiest one for me to share our programs and to share what we are doing at this point. Uh, so first of all, we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, we are accelerator incubator, depending on how you see it. Uh, for some startups uh, are, uh, you know, an incubator. For some others, we are considered accelerator. Uh, so uh, I'm going to admit another one here. Um, so in our programs, we have different programs, either for international startups or for uh, local startups. Uh, so if you see, there is a bunch of programs here. There is another coming up uh, very soon. Uh, but I'm going to start with the ones that are uh, directly in our website so you know how to navigate our programs. Uh, so these programs in particular are for international startups, the two of these that are looking here like flipping. And then uh, we have also the corporate program that is also aimed for international startups. So I'm going to go with the most popular one, which is the, um, a, the program for startups, in particular those that are looking for a startup visa program. Uh, so I'm going to open the window here. And you will see this is a, a three-phase program. Uh, so we normally start with a market validation program. Uh, when we do this, we, when we try to uh, work with the startups, international startups that are coming first time to Canada, uh, we are in, starting with validation program. I know this sounds a little bit difficult for startups that are um, a, you know, already with traction in Latin America or in other countries. And normally they all always ask us, why is that we need to go through validation process? The reason why is because there are a lot of assumptions from international startups in regards of the type of clients they have, the type of funding they can get, and the type of uh, ecosystem they are aiming to reach. Uh, so in this first uh, part, uh, we are connecting the startups with lodgers and immigration and incorporation. We are connecting with, uh, you know, some particular parts of a business plan that will help you to understand better what, uh, who is the client here in Canada or in the U.S. and, uh, you know, how you can approach to them. And either way, you have a good service or product that is offered in this particular, uh, you know, market. Um, because most of the startups that are entering into this program are aiming to start a visa program, which is phase three. We always ask from the beginning what, uh, you know, it's certain requirements that the government always requests. And one of the requirements is, for example, if you either have an IP strategy, and uh, this can be very confusing for startups that are coming from international markets because normally they don't uh, look at IP. When I mention IP, this is intellectual property. Uh, trademarks are important, but they are not as important for the startup visa program, especially for companies that don't, still don't have that much traction uh, in the market. Uh, so it's important to know that, you know, for us, uh, you either have to be owning your own code. So you build in-house your code, or if you are uh, actually putting together a product, uh, you know, like uh, maybe something related with IoT, with Internet of Things or something else, then you have to have a patent or you have to be in, uh, you know, in the course to have a patent. So that means that, uh, you know, you have to have uh, somehow an IP strategy. Uh, Canada is looking for global type of startups. And this is why IP is important for them. It's important for the government to have uh, companies that already have this type of, uh, you know, technologies that are new, um, innovative technologies. Uh, I don't want to say disruptive per se, because sometimes, uh, you know, they, they, uh, there is a question over, uh, how much disruptive a technology can be, you know, and it, it, we can really call it that way. Uh, so, uh, I mean, of course, we all uh, try to look for uh, disruptive technologies, but innovative technologies are good enough 
uh, to start with this program, especially if you have a company, a technology company that already have traction in the market, then this program is ideal for you. Um, the type of companies we have, uh, you know, market validation are either uh, those that are pre-revenue, uh, sometimes they may be in biotechnology on green tech or clean tech uh, when they are pre-revenue. You know, there are certain sectors that are more complicated uh, uh, to work with uh, in commercialization stage. Or we have companies that are already having sales $10, $30 million a year. So you can see that it's very broad and you, uh, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter for us if you have traction in your home country, you always come from uh, market validation if you don't have customers in Canada or the US. It's important for us to, uh, to know that part. Now, once you enter to the market validation program that usually, uh, you know, companies take it for one month, uh, then at the end of the program, what we are aiming to have is a diagnosis of the company. It's making sure that, uh, you know, this company actually has a plan the company actually has a potential in the market. There are no like a big red flags for you in regards of big competitors or uh, big, uh, you know, limitations in the ecosystem for you to actually put together your company here. Uh, sometimes uh, this may happen, for example, with some fintech companies that they may have to pass through very difficult regulations. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they have to look at perhaps more funding in order to be competitive. Uh, you know, I'm not saying this is happening with all fintech companies, but it may happen with some of them when they are competing, for example, with big banks or something like that. You know, so this is, uh, this is part of uh, what I'm saying this year. Um, so at the end, uh, when uh, people go through the diagnosis of the company, then, uh, you know, they, they pass uh, either or not to, to phase two. Uh, companies that they don't pass to phase two normally is because they themselves have identified this is not the right time to enter to North America and we need to make some changes. Uh, it has been very few cases when we have to tell them, hey, uh, just acknowledge this big red flag that you have. It may be a big, uh, you know, a problem for your company to actually uh, you know, enter to this market, not, it's not the best time, but most of the time it has been the companies that decide to go to phase two. And then in phase two is a market entry program. In this program is two months. And then, uh, you know, uh, we have the companies actually put in action what they have seen in, um, in phase one. Uh, we put together focus groups. We work in community uh, building. We work in marketing strategies. We work into actually put in place you know, the, the tools and the network that they need in order to grow in the ecosystem uh, here in Canada. At the end of this program, what we are aiming is that the companies become Canadian corporations. Uh, so it, if it makes sense for them at this point to actually uh, put a Canadian corporation, then, you know, they will be become eligible at the end of the program to apply for uh, phase three, which is a startup visa program. Uh, so at the end of the program, uh, there is going to be a meeting with our board of directors and our board of directors are going to decide whether or not this is a good case for a startup visa program. And here I'm going to come to the phase three. If you become eligible, if you pass through board of directors uh, meeting, then you know phase three is when a startup visa program starts. And this is a six months accelerator program. Uh, we are aiming to increase in sales and funding uh, for the companies that are becoming Canadian corporations and that are ex expanding business. So I know there is a lot of questions in regards of a startup visa program, like when, uh, you know, I'm getting my PR, uh, when I'm getting my paperwork, you know, to travel to Canada and all those kind of things. So first, let me tell you, we are not an immigration uh, firm. Uh, we do have partners with immigration firms, you know, that can help you around uh, and to, to do the stuff that you need to do. And that's why we connect them with them uh, from the beginning, you know, with, with our immigration partner. Uh, we don't force anyone to work with an immigration firm per se, but we kind of put the guidance together so you know, you know, any other alternative to start a visa program. Uh, the supporting letter is one of four requirements that startups uh, need in order to get, uh, you know, for the co-founders, the permanent residence uh, status. So either way, we give the supporting letter 
if you don't meet the other three requirements, then you still can have a declining in your case. Um, so, you know, the supporting letter doesn't mean that you are going to get your PR right away. The supporting meeting uh, letter, sorry, uh, means that uh, we uh, have done the due diligence and we are trusting that you have an actually scalable business and your business will be, uh, you know, producing the results that we are expecting under the program. So our responsibility is 100% for the program. Whatever you see here in the cost of the program for phase one, phase two, and phase three is a cost that you are paying for, uh, you know, become a part of the program, but never is for getting a letter of support. And many people are, uh, you know, come to us saying, we can refer a status, we can do this, we can do that. We can build, build this, uh, business plans. This is not something that we do. Uh, we actually work with companies that want to build a company in North America. And we do the due diligence as the government requires to do. Uh, so the supporting letter is given at the beginning of the program. So that means that you know, if you pass through phase one, phase two, you have waited three months to actually get your supporting letter if you get approved for uh, a start of visa program. And then, you know, we start from the beginning with the supporting letter because you will have to go through some legal paperwork that is very difficult to do during the process uh, at the end of the program. Uh, the supporting letter is good for six months. Um, so it, that means that in the six months that you have the supporting letter, you, you will have the opportunity to present your paperwork. You cannot overpass those six months. That is what it means. And then, you know, the program will continue uh, kind of like uh, connecting you to funding opportunities, connecting you uh, with investment, uh, with grants in the market, and also, uh, you know, making sure that you identify talent in the market uh, in order to uh, get access of the tools that you need to grow in Canada as a company. So that's kind of a, the first program that we have. I'm going to stop here in case that you have any questions. And, uh, you know, I just have to say one more thing. The applications we are receiving right now are for market validation. It's always for market validation phase one. And, uh, you know, we don't have more applications for this year. Uh, the applications we are receiving is for February uh, 2022. Uh, so if any questions at this point, please open your mic. Otherwise, I will continue uh, with the other programs. Yes, hi, uh, hi, Miriam. This is uh, Miriam, right? Yeah, hi, Francisco. How are you? Hi, hi. Let me turn on the video so we should. No worries. <laughs> um, so I, I'm sorry, I apologize because I joined a little, I had some technical problems. No worries. And I missed the, the first part of your presentation. Yeah. And, and it, it, so I had a question on intellectual property, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and I think, you know, intellectual property well, encompasses a number of items, mm -hmm. uh, uh, copyrights, patents, trademarks, trade secrets, a number of things, mm -hmm. and not necessarily, you know, sort of uh, limited to technology. Now, my question is, if, when, you, when you refer to IP, are you strictly um, limiting the concept to technology related. And, and the reason being is that if I've, I mean, I had a conversation with also Rafael, who suggested mm -hmm. I joined this, this call. Yeah. And, and I have a, sort of an idea on a company, but it's not um, predicated on, uh, let's say, IP type of technology. It's predicated mm -hmm. on particular trademarks, particular trade secret distribution models, different items that you can sort of construe as IP, but it's not really sort of a technological development. So is that something that would be included in the concept of IP? Okay, that's a good question, Francisco. Thank you so much for asking that. Now, uh, trademarks are not specifically strong for a startup visa program related IP. Uh, trade secrets, maybe. Uh, sometimes it can be, for example, a methodology that you want to protect. Uh, you know, um, that, that are, those are like a gray kind of cases that sometimes happen in, in two startups. Now, it's, it's interesting to, uh, a, you know, to understand maybe 
how investors and, and how, uh, you know, the government understands the concept of IP and the concept of startup. Um, technology companies are the ones that are growing fast in the market, not traditional type of companies. So that's why they are trying to put all the efforts into uh, support technology and technology can happen in, in many areas, you know, and at this point, almost every single sector are affected by is affected by technology. Uh, so sometimes people feel like uh, what we are doing is not technology related, but sometimes actually may be technology related when you are uh, having some applications and technology and what we are doing, what you are doing. So being said that, if it's, for example, a methodology, it may be uh, it, you may be able to protect that as a trade secret or as a, um, a, as a patent. Sometimes you can patent methodologies. If you are in the ideation phase, this program won't be for you. You know, do you have to have already some kind of traction, uh, like some kind of uh, users funding uh, in order to actually apply for the program? Because the first year is the most difficult year for companies. And uh, you need to demonstrate that you have enough funding for operational cost of the company uh, in, in Canada. And um, I can tell you, we have, we have worked with over 100 startups uh, already since the beginning of uh, our programs. And those that are limited with funding or they are in ideation phase have a really hard time putting together companies here. Like most of them have failed and to put together a company here. So that's why it's a hard core to, to actually have those requirements. The intellectual property help you, it is actually helping you to get grants in the market. This is free money from the government or is helping you to get funding from investors when you start to get traction. If you don't have intellectual property in between, it's very hard to find um, a, you know, investors putting money in your company just for the simple uh, thing that somebody else uh, can do the same that you are doing and that other person can protect their project and you haven't. So they can claim your project as their project and then the investment funding is gone. Uh, you know, that's why investors don't usually in North America don't put money in companies that don't have intellectual property. So this is not just for government requirement, but it's also for funding purposes. Uh, I hope that I answered the question or do you have any other question related with that, Francisco? I might have a follow on, but I can, I can send you a specific, my specific case uh, just, to, mm -hmm. just to have a circle, full circle on this one, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So I'm going to go to the next program uh, we have, and that's the Kingston Bootcamp program. Uh, this is a program that uh, we are working with the city of Kingston, which is very close by uh, to Toronto. And what we are doing with them is basically putting together a two weeks bootcamp. The city of Kingston is actually paying for this bootcamp, so startups don't have to pay uh, for uh, this bootcamp. Uh, what they are looking for is exactly the same requirements for the startup program. They are looking for technology companies with intellectual property able to relocate in Canada and specifically in Kingston because they have funding there for companies that are, for example, uh, in the health tech sector, uh, I believe for a uh, woman in tech, there are some requirements that there are some sectors that they are working with. Uh, I remember before it was cybersecurity, but it's not anymore. So they, they, are, they are huge in healthcare. Uh, so they are looking to uh, identify those type of companies that are in healthcare right now, and they are willing to support them uh, through this bootcamp. So startups don't have to pay, uh, they can apply. And uh, if you go through the requirements, you go and meet the criteria, you will be able to become a part of this bootcamp that will lead, uh, will connect you with this community that actually gets uh, uh, some funding around from the government for healthcare companies in a specific or women in tech. There are three three sectors that I believe that uh, they are looking for for this specific bootcamp. Uh, so this bootcamp is going to happen in October and uh, we are closing applications soon. I believe it's in uh, middle of September. 
So if you have a qualified company, you can always come, uh, you know, and apply for this bootcamp. Uh, now, the other program we have right now is the Elevate program. It's actually closing today, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining about this one. Uh, but this is a company for, a, sorry, a, a program for newcomers that want to create a new uh, career. You know, they, they want to build a new career in, in business development, marketing, customer experience, or market research. And Elevate is paying uh, for uh, supporting these companies. I mean, no paying for the participant. They are paying us to support participants to go through this program. This is a three months program. And, uh, you know, uh, the people that get involved with this, they get some, uh, you know, uh, training sessions um, every week uh, and they become, uh, you know, uh, good to, to be a professional in business development, marketing, market research or uh, customer experience. So uh, the idea is that we can match them with some of the companies that we have in technology so they can uh, get that experience, uh, work experience in Canada. But people have to be located in Canada so nobody can apply outside of Canada for this specific program, the Elevate uh, Talent Program. Doesn't matter what type of visa you have, but uh, you know, it's, it's just a, a program for uh, people living in Canada. Uh, so, the Canada expansion, uh, tech expansion program is aimed to Canadian companies that are expanding in Latin America. So again, because of the type of audience we have here today, I'm not going to spend too much time explaining about this program. This is a bootcamp that is happening in November uh, for Canadian companies that are looking into Latin American markets and they may uh, want to expand in there. So we have two bootcamps, one for Pacific Alliance and one for um, uh, Brazil or Mercosur, because we are involving also Argentina and Uruguay. Uh, now, this is a very cool, exciting program that we have right now, also with a very close deadline. And this is the a Newcomer as a, a Entrepreneur Accelerator Program. This is also aimed for uh, new residents of Canada, new uh, citizens or new permanent residents. And um, this is a free program that is supported by the government, by IRAP. In particular, this is an entity from the federal government uh, that is supporting uh, five companies uh, to uh, enter, uh, you know, uh, to accelerate sales in the Canadian market or internationally. Uh, this is a six months program. And we need for these companies to have headquarters in Canada to have minimum 50% of the co-founders uh, be a permanent resident or citizen of Canada, new citizen or new permanent resident to have some revenue, annual revenue, uh, like a $50,000 in Canada, that's really minimum uh, for them to have a revenue. Of course, have like less than 500 employees. So that, that's considered here like a small, medium business. And then uh, companies um, developing uh, new technologies in Canada, uh, pursuing IP. So they don't have to have IP, but they need to pursue to have IP uh, you know, uh, to go through uh, this program. So the deadline for this program is going to be September 17, I believe. And uh, we are going to uh, start this program in September. It, it can be hybrid or online, uh, you know, for participants that, that want to become a part of this program. Uh, and the last program we have available here is the corporate program. And the corporate program aimed to be for, uh, can it, for international companies that want to relocate in Canada, but they are not necessarily pursuing, uh, you know, a visa for uh, their co-founders. That means that, you know, none of the co-founders are looking to have a permanent residence visa, reason why they are not entering to the startup program for uh, per phases. The corporate program is more like customized type of program for companies. And in this, in this case, this program, for example, doesn't require IP. Uh, this requires just to be a company, uh, hopefully in technology, that wants to open second headquarters in North America. Uh, there are different reasons why uh, you know, companies may apply for this particular program. But one of the reasons is uh, to improve technology so they can become more competitive uh, in their home countries or uh, they are just, uh, you know, having a Canadian brand that is stronger, uh, you know, for them to, again, sell better in some other markets. 
So what we offer is a very customized program for this type of companies. Uh, so we offer uh, seven different, uh, you know, tools that will help them to uh, go through, uh, you know, the process that the other companies do. But in this case, um, uh, you know, it's, it's in three months uh, that we complete the program. Uh, we have companies here like uh, Godelius, for example, has been with us for already 18 months in this program. Uh, Grupo Seara, they 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 went uh, they were with us just for three months, and that was good enough for them to uh, to do the process. Uh, so you know there are different programs uh, that we have in Latam startups. Uh, so I hope that uh, you know you guys can actually take a look and see if any of the programs make sense for you. Um, Innovation Center here that I'm uh, that I'm clicking on. This is basically the um, the corporate program, but it gives you an idea of our office and you know what we have right now, where we are located. Uh, you know, it gives information about the Canadian Startup Visa program as well. Uh, you know, so so we have offices that haven't been used that much in this uh, 2020, 2021, but we still have some startups that have been able to go and visit, uh, you know, the office and be working from there. Uh, this is the list of our startups and clients that have been a part of our programs since 2017. Now, I have to say that the ones that are here are a startup visa or they are a you know, market entry program. We don't put the ones that are in phase one program, market validation, because it's too short. Uh, but uh, you, can, you can take a look of the different type of startups we have uh, in, in our cohorts and maybe relate with some of the solutions that they have. Uh, we do have different events, like the one that we are doing today, which is, this is an info session we do every other month. And uh, we have coming up uh, Chilean Spotlight, which is an event that is happening September 29 about the Chilean startup ecosystem. If you want to know more about us, uh, then you, know, you can always click here and uh, about us, you will see you know, who are our board of directors, uh, you know, our team uh, right now was a part of our team and our mentors. Uh, so we have a very uh, good dedicated uh, team of professionals uh, working with the startups every single day in the different programs. And our board of directors are very well recognized, either investors or people in the ecosystem that are, that are very well connected, you know, with some other people and they many times help us to connect also startups and so on. And of course, uh, you know, you can be a part of our newsletter. Uh, here, some of our marketing coordinator is the one that sends the newsletter every other week. And, uh, you know, we uh, kind of share information about our programs. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you will have information about our startups, how they are progressing, who is raising money, and, uh, you know, who is becoming a part of uh, uh, some other cool initiatives in the market. So I'm going to, again, stop here, uh, you know, as it has been already 30 minutes me talking. Uh, so if anyone has any other question, please go ahead. You can open your mic at this point. No questions so far? Hello. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is Sadiq Shahriar. I'm calling from Bangladesh. Yeah. Uh, hi. I have a startup in uh, Agrotech, mm -hmm. and uh, we are doing some IoT projects. Uh, what I'm asking is, uh, what are the documentation you need uh, to submit uh, to assess the company's uh, progression? Yeah. It... Yeah. Thank you so much for that question. Actually, uh, you know, for the if you're talking about the startup program, which is the, the program that is linked with the startup visa program, uh, at the beginning, we just need the application form. We don't need any document at the beginning. Uh, but if you are called for an interview, if you match the criteria and you're called for an interview, then, uh, you know, in the interview, we are going to be asking questions about your intellectual property, financial stability, and so on. And uh, if you get approved to become a part of the program, which next program again is going to be February 2022, then uh, you know what, what is going to happen is that we are going to ask you as much information as possible from your company, uh, business oriented information, like what type of customer are you uh, looking for to reach, 
you know, what type uh, of solution do you have? Uh, so if you have already a business plan that helps, uh, if you have a pitch deck, sales pitch deck or investors pitch deck, uh, that also helps. Uh, so whatever information, uh, you know, you can pass after your approval, it will be good for our support team uh, that, that is working with the startups uh, in order to help them, uh, you know, to, to do better in the market. Yes, uh, actually, we are uh, a Founder Institute um, uh, graduate company uh, from mm -hmm. 2019. During this COVID, uh, we haven't uh, expanded our operations. We just uh, cover, recovered from the longest uh, lockdown, uh, second largest in the world. So yeah. uh, we just started our operations now, and uh, we are looking to expand in the um, uh, Canadian uh, greenhouse uh, market. So that's why uh, I was looking for a startup visa program and uh, looking in the in, uh, incubators there. So uh, we, uh, shall we be um, able to apply uh, as uh, we are already uh, from another incubator like Farnberg Institute, uh, is it of possible? Oh yeah, totally. Like we have many startups uh, that, you know, they, they are a part of all their uh, programs. And we totally encourage that there is no overlapping whatsoever, uh, you know, for for our programs. Uh, the only thing is that, uh, you know, yeah, you apply for market validation. Make sure that you read the criteria. Make sure that you read the cost of the program. Everything, uh, you know, that you agree with all of those things. And uh, you know, if you match with the criteria, you are welcome to apply. And uh, we probably are going to ask you for an interview. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other question, guys? Any other question in the audience? If there is no other question, then uh, I will really, uh, you know, thank you for uh, being a part of uh, this info session. Uh, and we are recording this info session, and uh, Samuel is going to share this bright news, uh, the uh, the internal event bright newsletter. And then uh, this is also going to be posted in our YouTube channel. If you haven't explored our YouTube channel, just go ahead. Uh, we have a lot of uh, content and information there about our programs. Thank you so much for your attention and have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.